Next up on our lightning round session, uh, sessions is Joanne Mancuso, who's from our Bennington Public Library here in um, Bennington, Nebraska. And she's going to talk about their preschool STEAM that they've been doing. That's an awesome idea. Go ahead, Joanne. <laughs> Thank you so much, Krista, for having me. I am very excited to be here and to talk to you about our preschool STEAM science. It started, let me get to the next slide. It started when we closed down like everyone else with COVID and we lost that connection with our preschool kids, well, with everyone. And uh, we did the summer reading take home kits, but when school was starting, we decided that we needed something else to reconnect with our preschoolers. We found a lot of parents were not sending their kids to preschool and they were kind of at a loss as to what to do with them. They didn't have a plan. So we started these preschool steam boxes. Um, we started off with 20 of them and inside were just a month's worth of activities for them to do with their child that had specific instructions on how to do it. Counting, letter recognition, uh, stacking cups with different, uh, with different numbers, scissor practice, all different kinds of things, a lot of shape recognition. And also we included science. And what we were gonna, we were trying to figure out how we could bring this online. And science was the only activity that we could think of that would be a virtual. So what we did is we made up kits. And uh, this first picture up at the top right is a, one of the first kits that we did after the uh, initial four week one. And uh, we, went on to Facebook Live. Well, each kit had uh, items that they would not necessarily find at home. They had lard, which most people might have, pipettes, we included those, Elka-Seltzer, candy canes, gummy worms, penguin erasers. Um, we even had um, biodegradable uh, packing peanuts for one of our latest science things. And uh, so each session, they would come and get a pick up a kit and the first time we made 20, the second time we made 20 and we ran out. So we, we added five more. And uh, this last session, which lasted seven weeks, we gave out 30 and we still didn't have enough. So it was very successful. Next, we decided to do it on Facebook Live. We were doing preschool story time on Facebook Live uh, and they were doing very well. So we chose Facebook Live as our, as our um, form. And uh, what I would do is do an event and uh, I would take pictures of the books we were going to be reading, all the supplies that they would need from their kits. And a lot of people didn't get kits, so this was a good way for them to see what items that they would need at home. Each session is 20 minutes long at the most. Um, our science experiments were very simple, very easy. Uh, if they didn't get a kit, they could find most of the products themselves. Um, sometimes they worked, sometimes they didn't. We used, uh, oh, and since we were reading on Facebook Live, we did ask permission. We did go to each publisher and ask permission to use their books, whether it was the nonfiction or the fiction. That was really important to us. And uh, we used scientific terms always made sure we use scientific terms so that when the kids started school, they were familiar with a lot of the terms. Uh, and some of them I actually had to look up myself because I had forgotten what they were. So it was, it was a learning experience for me as well. Um, the science uh, experiments, they've been really cool. This, this one where it says how to catch a snowman, that was our biodegradable packing peanuts. We made into a little snowman. This was our winter science. And uh, that was a lot of fun. We melted it with just water. And the kids really seemed to enjoy that. And then we did a walking rainbow experiment. And that worked very, very well. That was very exciting. And uh, the one that didn't go well was the one with the gummy Franken worms. <laughs> the gummy worms were very heavy. They did not float, so they were supposed to float. Um, when you mix the vinegar and the baking soda and yeah, they did not work at all. And uh, so I discovered that you had to cut the gummy worms in fourths and uh, so they weren't so heavy and then they started dancing around. And later I did 
put that in the comments of the video so that people doing a video later on could see that, yes, it actually did work. Um, like I said, they were very easy. That not everything will be a success, especially for the kids. Yes, and that was one of the points. And, and we always have said that um, science, it's all about doing and redoing and, and constantly trying things again. And things fail all the time. And sometimes the failure comes up with something else. And it ends up being a success, just not the success that we were thinking it was going to be. So um, it's it's been a lot of fun, and we get a lot of um, feedback from it. We've had it's been a very good success, and uh, we have pictures sent to us, emails, comments, um, and how much the kids really are enjoying the simple science. Not everyone gets on live. Uh, we have a lot of families that do it later after school for their other kids, school age kids. And um, so it's a lot of fun for the whole family. And like I said, it's simple, very, very simple science experiments, uh, most of which you could find on Pinterest. Or, uh, and you know, some that they'll do later on in school at a more difficult level. But it's, it's basic and it's a lot of fun. And the kids seem to really enjoy it. And it's been very successful. And here's some of the pictures of our kids enjoying it at the top right you'll see this little guy this is the original um steam box that we gave out we decided to just end it after that four weeks we were not going to give out all of those items again and we just strictly went with the science um but that's some of the items that we included simple things candy uh, fruit loops um stacking cups it was a lot of fun and then over on the left we have a, a little boy, one of our patrons, who decided to become a real scientist, and he had his little goggles and everything. And that one was uh, we were doing, trying to um, make the ice crack like it does in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you just put ice cubes in and then cover it with baking soda, freeze it again, and then you take vinegar. Anything that's vinegar and baking soda, the kids go nuts over so that was a good one. And the middle one was one of our first experiments that was in that original box. And we did a comparison between Pop Rocks and uh, Nerds candy. And so they each ha they had to provide their own Coke bottles, but we provided the balloons and the candy. And they dropped them in there, put the balloons on top, and we needed to see which balloon would get bigger with which candy, whichever one worked. Um, nerds definitely worked better, surprisingly. We thought it was going to be the Pop Rocks, but it was the Nerds. I have so guessed it too. All right. You know, yeah. learned something new. Science. That's right. I, yeah, <laughs> it was It's really, and at first I started to practice the, the science experiments numerous times before I would do it online with the kids. And then I decided now I needed to just do it for the first time with the kids so that they can see that mistakes really do happen. And some funny things have really happened online the kids are used to seeing me you know make mistakes online <laughs> so <laughs> and then the bottom right is that was to our two little guys actually two kids of our staff and um they were melting the snowmen so they had a really good time those those biodegradable packing peanuts that was a really neat uh that was a neat one uh and the little faces so they would melt and you would just see a tiny bit of the of the white packing material and, but you could still see the Sharpie face. So that was that was a lot of fun. And then we also expanded that one where I brought in extra, well, different, besides water, different liquids. And one was hand sanitizer since we have so much everywhere. And I had brought, I had dipped the, uh, the hand sanitizer onto the one of those packing peanuts. And what happened, it didn't dissolve. It just shrunk in on itself and made this tiny, tiny little snowman when you still see the face but it it just shrunk all the moisture out of it and it was hard and and little so the kids got a kick out of that um, but i do encourage them to um keep going at home and finding other things that will work on the science experiment so this is my information if anyone has any questions um feel free to contact me at our library Great. Yes. Thank you, Joanne. Um, I do have a couple of questions um, okay. that we will um, do here quickly. Um, how did you distribute the colors, uh, your colors for your walking rainbow? How did that? 
Well, I did not. We just assumed that most people had uh, markers. So we did give them, um, the, actually, I don't think I gave them anything for that one. I just told them to make sure they had uh, good working washable markers and sure. then a uh, paper towel and a water. And that's all they really needed. Okay. And did you have any limit to the number of kits um, per family? Did you have any sort of like one kit per family or anything like that? Or It was one kit per rules? family. It was one kit per family. And, uh, sure. you know, some, they just shared everything. So, yeah. yeah, it didn't seem to be an issue. If there's multiple kids, they'll all do it together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that question here, which we, we'll see about the answer. Uh, what about the copyright laws of reading the books and then posting them for watching later? So now, at I, the I moment, think... we know that many publishers have um, relaxed their restrictions Mm -hmm. on um, copyright and reading and recording and doing all these live things because of COVID. Uh, right now, it's actually, I was just looking it up, extended through June 30th, the last time I saw. But I know it does depend on publisher, what whether or not you can save the videos or not, or if it's live only, it, it varies, but it has been relaxed at the moment because of COVID. Now, I don't know, you looked into that as well, Joanne? Yeah, I uh, since I had been doing story time um, right. on Facebook Live, we, I'm always very, uh, careful to make sure I ask permission. I've only had, you know, I think once since COVID began. So in about a year, I've only had one publisher not let me use their book. And that was at the very beginning. Um, but mm -hmm. I do follow what they ask. And we usually take down the story time we took down after a month. But uh, the science videos, we ask to make sure that they know they will stay on our Facebook. Uh, mm -hmm. And it hasn't been a problem yet. Yeah. So they're being very helpful. If you just look up, I just Googled, I know School Library Journal has been keeping track of this, so look up School Library Journal, uh, publishers, COVID, whatever, you'll find articles about it and about, they're trying to gather what all the different publishers are saying or permissions they're giving. All right, thank you so much, Joanne. We're going to get right into our last...